Hello everyone, long time no see. Today I will be giving you a rundown on a new project series I am working on. I am going to be putting together a basic demo encoded storage system and taking you along for the ride. The system conceptualized follows the current meta for encoded storage systems. My goals with this project are to explore some of what is possible with encoded tech, teaching you along the way. Through this project, I also hope to learn more about storage tech and improve my wiring skills. You may ask, what is an encoded storage system? I would define an encoded storage system as a storage system which stores items based on an assigned code for that item type. First, we run the item through an encoder, which spits out a code for that item type. Next, we use that code to select the destination for that item, for instance, using a decoder. Then, we store that item in the selected location. In a future video, we will go through the encoder a device which assigns a code to the item type uh, the, of my own design. For a technical exploration of the math and design behind encoders, I highly recommend Whitestone Jazz's video series on encoding in Minecraft. It's what we can do with these codes that makes encoded storage tech so powerful. With that out of the way, let's go over what I want the system to do. First, I would like to be able to store bulk item types in large amounts outside of the player render distance. This mitigates the FPS impact that the large amount of chests would have on the player. I will accomplish this in the form of an encoded remote bulk, which is a fairly common feature of encoded storage systems these days. To be able to readily access the items stored in this bulk, I will set up both a player call system and a bulk display hall. I will be using this quad bulk hall, which was developed by myself, Obi, Hamter, and Tatnerd. This bulk hall has four double chest and shulker box display setups per slice, reducing the length of the bulk hall significantly. Currently, I plan to store 252 bulk item types, which means that I only need a 63 block long quad bulk hall. To refill the chests in the bulk hall, I will implement a passive restocking system, which I will explain in greater detail in the future. For a general view of the concepts I will employ, check out Masontic's video on the subject. For item types which I have less of, I will be using an encoded 8 item type per slice chest hall. This hall will have full comparator readouts from the chests, allowing the system to send either loose items or full boxes to the chest for this item type. This is an interesting way to store these less common item types, while also allowing the player to store a good amount of them. The player will be able to easily grab a stack or two of the item they need, or grab a box or two if they need more. This chest hall will not call for a restock. Instead, items and boxes will be directly routed to the chest they belong in as they are handled by the input system. I will explore some parallelization techniques to unload at up to 4x hopper speed. This brings me to the input system I will use. Unfortunately, I have not gotten around to exploring the various sorting methods available in depth. Thus, I am currently planning on using a straightforward splitting and merging sorting system to handle input mixed item type boxes. First, these mixed boxes will be split into partial single item type boxes. Next, these partial boxes will be merged into full single item type boxes, which can be sent to the remote bulk or to the chest hall depending on the item type. To tide you over on these topics and offer some background, I highly recommend several videos by Misontic, Datnerd, Andrews, and Floppy Donkey on some of the various sorting and merging methods available. These are the basic components of my system. Once I finish these and put it all together, I will continue the series by focusing on some add-ons or modifications to the system that are interesting to me. As it now stands, I am interested in adding matrix encoded chest halls, a crafting system, and some techniques to reduce the player call latency for the system. If I come up with new add-ons or think of optimizations, I will continue to make videos on the storage system. Now let's take at a look at the schematic overview of the system. Let's begin with the input side where mixed and full single item type boxes will be sorted and encoded. From an input interface, full boxes will be sent directly to a variable shulker box sorter to group batches of boxes with the same item type. These groups will be sent to the encoder, where only one box needs to be encoded in order to encode the entire group. This reduces the amount of encoder calls necessary to encode all of the input full boxes. Mixed boxes are a little bit trickier. They will first be sent through splitters, which will split the mixed boxes into single item type partial boxes. 
Next, these partial boxes need to be merged together to reduce the amount of partial boxes we need to deal with. I currently plan to employ an encoderless merging scheme, similar to the one Mesontic has proposed. Full boxes from the merger will head to the grouping system, uh, where they will be grouped and sent to the encoder. Once a single partial box is left, it will be sent to the encoder to decide how it should be handled. On the encoder side of things, we will use a single input to the encoder to encode both bulk and chest haul items. We can distinguish between them in order to decide how to handle both categories of item type. The encoder will have two modes, sort and call. For input operations, the sort mode will be active. For whatever is input to the encoder, whether a single box or a grouping of boxes, the first box will be encoded. Remaining boxes will bypass the system, but be held until the encoded box is ready. If the encoded item type is a bulk item type and the encoded box is full, this box and any grouped with it will be sent to the remote bulk. If the encoded bulk item type is not full, it will be sent to a, the temporary storage silo where it will be held until new inputs are available to be merged with. If the encoded box is a chest hall item type and it is full, it will be sent to the chest hall where it will be unloaded or stored in the appropriate chest according to the signal strength readout. If the encoded box is not full, a readout request will be made to the chest hall. Based on the readout from the chest for the item type, the box will either be sent to be unloaded into the chest or diverted to the temporary storage to wait for new inputs to be, over to be merged with. On the output side of things, the player can call boxes from the remote bulk, or find them in the bulk display call, or the chest hall. For player call, the encoder will sequentially encode an instruction shulker box, where each token item present represents a call for 54 boxes of that item type. The backbone of my system is the brain, otherwise known as a priority queue. I have explained this component in detail in my parallel passive restocking video, but I will give a quick overview here. In essence, this component takes in request entries from multiple sources and accepts these requests according to priority when the system is ready for them. In this manner, the system can prioritize certain operations over others, while making sure that only one operation is running at any given time. The priority queue will have several possible request entries. First, the call request, which is entered when the system begins to handle a player call. Next, the sort request, which is entered when the system would like to send some boxes to the appropriate slot in the remote bulk or to the appropriate chest in the chest halls. Finally, the restock request will be entered when the quad bulk display hall needs to restock its chest from the remote bulk. Once these processes are done, the request will be cleared from the queue. In order for the priority queue to accept a request entry, two conditions must be met. First, the system must be ready for the operation, which comes from the ready signal from either the remote bulk or the chest hall. Second, the system must be chunk loaded. Using the priority queue, we can do our best to prevent any screw ups. I hope you have enjoyed this introduction to the series. Please let me know if you have any questions or suggestions. I'm already working on the first video, which will be about the encoder and surrounding logic. Thank you.